All right, you guys. Um, hi, welcome to what I'm calling my first chapter chat for night. Um, I want to make sure that in addition to you guys um, doing your journal entries and thinking about uh, this memoir, that um, I still get an opportunity to chat with you about this book. And since we're not in a traditional classroom setting, um, I don't get to share my own opinions and maybe that's a little bit selfish of me, but I've read this memoir a handful of times and I think it's a really important one for students to experience every time I read it. It's um, really impactful for me. Um, and, and now that I've read it all the way through, there are things that happen earlier in the memoir that I wish I would have noticed um, and led students to the first time that they experience it. I watched this movie over the weekend called Mr. Church and in that book this man is teaching this young girl to read. She's not teaching her to read, she already knows how to read and um, like what the words mean, but uh, teaching her to become a reader and he says to her in the movie that students are that books are best enjoyed from beginning to end but they're best understood from end to beginning. Um, and I just thought that that was kind of a beautiful thing. And so now that I've read all the way to the end of this memoir, the things that happen in the beginning are more meaningful for me and as a reader. And so um, I'm hoping that in these chapter chats, a couple of things happen. First, I'm hoping to be five minutes-ish. This first one might be a little bit longer because it's one, my first one. Um, and I'm introducing you and myself to the idea of chapter chats because it's a new thing for me too. This one will be a little bit longer. Um, and chapter one is pretty long, so that's gonna impact that too. Um, but my goal for these chapter chats is to um, briefly chat about my reactions and responses to the chapter that we just read. For this chapter chat, it's gonna be chapter one. Um, and then to point you to a couple of things that I think are really important in that particular chapter. Give a little summary um, and help to tie what we're reading in that particular chapter to what we talked about um, as far as Vicel's purpose for writing night. So I'm going into this book after having read the preface and identifying that his purpose is really threefold. Um, he tells us that part of his purpose is to um, dig into the nature of madness, um, whether to go mad or to not go mad, but to understand um, madness and to help us to understand what that is like. So I think that there's part of helping us to understand something that we absolutely can't really know because we didn't experience it and he did. Um, and so he's going like leaning in to the trauma and the chaos and the madness of it all and hoping to understand better himself and to share that understanding with us. The second thing that he hopes to do in this memoir is to pay respects to the people who didn't live. He doesn't know why he survived, um, but he believes that he has a moral obligation to bear witness and to um, speak out for the people that didn't survive. Part of that is not wanting the Nazis to gain an additional victory. He says, um, by letting this event be forgotten from history, they get to win all over again. Not only do they get to create this horrific experience, but also um, they get their conscience cleaned. And uh, so he doesn't want for that to happen. And then finally, uh, his purpose is to help us prevent something like this from ever happening again in history. And so um, hopefully it's impactful enough for you guys that, uh, that your generation cares deeply about justice and about preventing things like this from happening. Okay, so that's my pitch. As I'm looking at the time, it's already four minutes, so we're definitely going over five minutes for this first chat, but I'll try really hard to make the next ones um, within five minutes or so, because I know that my voice can get boring. Okay, so Night, Ellie Vaisal, chapter one. They're not actually titled, as you all know, um, but there are nine chapters in total. I guess I could have done this part two night. Okay, so I think that there are a couple things that happen um, it, that are really important in chapter one. First, we're introduced to Moishi the Beetle. I don't know if that's Moish or Moish or Moishi, um, but uh, I've heard it all of those different pronunciations. I call him Moishi the Beetle. Um, Moishi the Beetle represents two ideas in this book. 
first, um, and some of your journal entries have already talked about this, the beetle um, is a transient in town. He's characterized as like a homeless person. He doesn't really have any money, but he's not a nuisance, so they tolerate him. Um, he is the first one to uh, come back to their town to really tell them about what's going on because he experienced it himself when um, all of the foreign Jews are expelled from Transylvania, which is where this story is initially taking place. That's where he's from, a town called Siget. Um, so he represents um, that particular demographic of people in this time and this place. And I think because of his demographic, it was easy for people to kind of disregard what he was saying. Um, a second and important thing about Moshe the Beetle is that his relationship with Eliezer um, is one of a mentorship in terms of Kabbalah, which is a Jewish mysticism. It's a religious practice that Eliezer's dad wouldn't let him learn about. Um, but Moishu the Beetle uh, is really familiar and he kind of takes Eliezer under his wing to teach him about all of these mysteries of God. Um, and one of the places where that becomes really apparent in my book, it's on page four. I don't know where it is for you guys. Um, but but Moishi asks him, why do you cry when you pray? And I answered, I don't know. Um, I had never asked myself that question. I cried because something inside me felt the need to cry. That was all I knew. Why do you pray? He asked after a moment. Why did I pray? Strange question. Why did I live? Why did I breathe? Um, I think that Moisu the Beetle and introduction to the Kabbalah here is setting us up for how important faith is for Eliezer early on in this book um, and that it's through Moisha the Beetle and um, that he learns about this kind of nuanced and deep difficult relationship with God um, and his relationship with God of course becomes um, particularly difficult through this experience but from the very beginning and um, we meet this character who is really impactful in teaching him that that God isn't about getting all of the answers but God is about asking all of the right questions and um, and so that idea of questioning I think will keep coming in and um, the second thing that I want to talk about with chapter one um, is this idea of denial and optimism. So in chapter one, we see kind of the progression of the Jews living in Saget um, to being in cattle cars. Like that's exactly what happens. And it's over a year that he talks about in this first chapter. And he talks specifically about events that happen um, and not in great detail about the events themselves, but he talks a lot about people's reaction to these events so they're hearing all of these newscasts about what the nazi party is doing and what's happening to jewish people and they deny it and they hear that they're going to be transported and tortured and killed from moishu the beetle and they don't believe it they deny it and they're put into constant they're put into um, ghettos their town has become a ghetto it's not that bad they get to just be with themselves they um uh, the Germans come in as a militant force and it's really not that bad. And so throughout this chapter, um, Eliezer talks a lot about this idea of optimism, of Jewish optimism, this idea that this could never happen to us um, and disbelief about what's really happening in the world. Um, my very favorite quote about that, um, I don't have the page open up, I probably should have, is where he says, um, It's on page 12. The ghetto was ruled by neither German nor Jew. It was ruled by delusion. Um, and the delusion that he's talking about is the denial that something like this could ever happen. Um, I think that this is a really important point. Many of you have already talked in your journals about, um, about not understanding how something like this could happen. And I think for most of us who have learned about the Holocaust, the thing that is most crazy for us is the belief that something like this could happen. I mean, we learn more about this in chapter three, his own, like there's no way that something like this could happen, his own beliefs about that. Um, but we do know uh, that it did happen. And so um, it really brings into question this idea of denial and delusion and optimism. And where is it not a good idea to have optimism? And where do we need to kind of understand that these kinds of things do happen and can happen? And maybe is it our obligation as a 
as a post-Holocaust society to learn what the warning signs are, to kind of learn the process of dehumanization that allowed for something like this to happen um, and to be responsible for stopping it. Um, okay, and then the final thing that I want to talk about in this chapter in my last three seconds, I'm gonna go even over 10 minutes, I'm so sorry, in my last minute or so is, um, is the title is Night. And I was noticing as I was reading through chapter one again that there are multiple times where he says night fell. Um, and so there's this constant reference to this idea of nighttime. Um, and it made me think of Bless Me Ultima and how in that river scene um, where Lupito was murdered, uh, Antonio says that the darkness had never um, felt so intense to him. Not, and then when we talked about darkness, we talked about kind of nighttime versus daytime and light versus dark and in dark, what is there the absence of? What, what could that be representative of? And I think that, um, that this time as I read this memoir, I want to pay closer attention to, to the idea of night and what that um, recurring kind of motif for might represent um, for Vicel and, uh, and so that's my chapter chat. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that was 10 minutes, 11 minutes worth your time. Um, I promise my chapter two chapter chat will be shorter. Um, but I do want to make sure that I'm pointing you towards some things in the text that maybe you didn't notice on the first time. Um, and that we're getting to have a conversation about how the purpose is being met, um, and how, uh, we can relate to the ideas that happened in this memoir to maybe stuff that's happened since or that's happening in the world right now. I have seen in your journals that you're already starting to do some of that connecting work around Moishi and uh, what he could represent in today's world um, or in a bigger picture sort of thing. So thank you for coming to my chapter chat. That was on Nights by Ellie Vicel. He is this guy. Um, and so please stop referring to him as her. That happens every semester. I'm not quite sure why, but he is a man. And uh, thanks. See you guys tomorrow.